Thank you. On page 89 in your teachings syllabus, we have a most unusual uh, and very graphic description of the function and the operations of the gifts of the Holy Spirit in the first century uh, related to the infant church born in Jerusalem, 33 AD. And uh, we enumerate in this entire lesson 52 positive uh, relationships to where the gifts of the Spirit, one of the nine gifts of the Spirit, functioned in 52 in 52 definite uh, experiences and times in the early church. Now, the purpose for identifying these is because many people believe that after the day of Pentecost, the entire gifts of the Spirit cease to function, which is not true, of course. Uh, but in order for this just to show the point that we should identify them, and so we begin in Acts chapter 1, uh, and it's in verse 4 and 5, where Jesus spoke the words of wisdom, saying that they, not many days hence, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And so uh, we have a, a word of divine wisdom spoken by the Lord Jesus Christ himself. It had not yet come to pass he prophesied that it would come to pass. And in the New Testament, that is the functioning of the gift of the Word of God's wisdom. And so the first instance of it, uh, over on the right-hand side, it says, manifested through whom? The first one was through the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And then you drop down to verse 8. This is still in the book of the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1. And you have the gift of the Word of Wisdom again, when the Lord Jesus said, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. And so we have again the, the, the spoken future, the, exactly, precisely what was going to happen that had not as yet happened. And so we have again the gift of the word of God's wisdom. Uh, notice to identify the word word because you don't have all of God's wisdom, and it's not the gift of wisdom. You're not wise in everything. You're only wise in what God projects through you supernaturally about the future. That is the word of God's wisdom. And, and so uh, we have to realize that if we only give half of a name for something, we just may not have the true interpretation of it. It is the word of God's wisdom, which means that God only gives you a word. A word is a fragment. A word is a fragment of a whole. And so the, the word is a fragment uh, of a sentence, you see. And so God gives you a fragment of his wisdom expanding to you what the future is. And so uh, when you know that, then, then you come to understand it. Do you have the third instance in Acts 1 and 11? And this time we have angels speaking and, and, and telling them what is going to come to pass as when the church is born. And, and that they're going to receive power from the Lord and so forth. And so the, the, uh, the third one here is uh, an angel speaking God's word of wisdom, speaking of the future, which is a very remarkable situation. And then, and number four, you have Acts 2 and 4, uh, where the gift of tongues is given to, the, to those that were present, and uh, you're, you're manifested through whom to the right, is 120. And that was just the beginning because on that same day when they left the upper room and went down to the, to the great courtyard of the temple, then 3,000 more entered into the blessing uh, with them. Peter said, the promise is to you, to your children, and to as many as are far off, even as many as the Lord I God shall call. Now he was also at that time speaking a word of wisdom uh, <clears throat> of, the, of the future. But in Acts 2 and 4, you have the gift of tongues, and it was by the 120 at first. And then in, in uh, Acts 2 and 43, you have gifts of healing, uh, where it says that all the apostles were involved in, in taking the healing power of Jesus to, uh, would, would have 
the power of God to go and, and teach all these people. So you have the gifts of the word of wisdom and uh, and I mean, you have the gifts of tongues, number four. You have the gifts of the word of wisdom, number five. I skipped just one there. Uh, and uh, that was by, by Peter when he, when he spoke in Acts 2.39, the promises unto you and to your children, as many as are far off. He was saying that we would receive it even unto this day until the call of the Lord stops, which has never stopped yet, uh, then this gift would be functioning in the church. And then the next one of the gifts of healing that all the apostles would be involved in, Acts, Acts 2 and 40, 43. And then in Acts 2 and uh, 43 also, you, you have the gift of the working of miracles and all the apostles not only did healings, uh, which uh, could be a gradual, a gradual recovery, but also they, they, they had uh, the gifts of miracles working, which is an instant recovery where God does a miracle on their behalf. Then you come down to number eight and it has gifts of healing again. And this was done by Peter. And then you have the gift of faith, which was by the church, you know. The first, the, the, the church showed that it could bring into being that which did not exist by the spoken word. And they, they function in the gift of faith. I had a very difficult decision to make uh, whether, whether I would take each one of these and read it to you and explain it. And then it would take six or seven weeks to go through this one chapter. And, and we have already decided not to be teaching out of this syllabus at Christmas time. Seeing that we've already been teaching out of it for over six months. And what I would really like to do is to take each one of these and talk about them again. But we have talked about them in the other chapters or in the other lessons, and so I don't feel that that is necessary. All we want to do at this time is to show any unbeliever that these did not terminate at the day of Pentecost, that these were the flowing of the church through the first generation of the church, and that it never stopped and it never ceased as we taught it in the lessons. It just continued to go even until this moment in which you and I live today. Uh, number 10, we have the gift of the discerning of spirits, uh, uh, where Acts 5 and 3 and 9, where, where we have Peter discerning Ananias and Sapphira, who were trying to deceive the church, and that gift was a salvation for the church. And these are gifts that we need in the church, to function in the church, where we shall know and understand who's right, who's wrong, what's good and what's bad and so forth. And we believe that these gifts have to be completely restored into the body. And the reason we're teaching about them is we want the restoration now. And all the people said. And then uh, uh, number 11, you have the gifts, the gift of the working of miracles and all the apostles were involved in that. And for number 12, you have gifts of healing. All the apostles were involved in this again. Even Peter's shadow uh, heal people as he as he passed by. And then you have Acts in 5 and 16 where you have gifts of healing done by the apostles. And then in Acts 5 and 19 you have the gifts of the working of miracles done by an angel. Uh, I wanted to show you that the, the, the flow of the gifts of the Spirit is not identified just with, a, with preachers or, or, or missionaries or, or, or elders in, in a church, but the gifts of the Spirit can function with anybody. All of us, every one of us should function in the gifts of the Spirit. And we showed you lesson after lesson of where when we seek these things and search for these things and desire these things, that then they begin to come to pass. And we believe we've come to that period in history where the final mighty outpouring of the Spirit will take place, and we want to see it. And all the people said, Amen. and then you're in Acts chapter 5, 19, you have the gift of working miracles by an angel. In Acts 6 and 8, you have uh, you have Stephen doing mighty wonders, the Bible says, and you have him also doing, doing healings. And so we, we have here him doing miracles and doing healings before he was stoned to death by the people. And then in number 16, uh, you have gifts of healing, and this was done by Philip. He went over to Samaria, and God gave him mighty, mighty, mighty miracles over there of healing. And so you have the gifts of healing functioning, and in Acts chapter 8, you have the gift of the working of miracles by the same person, Philip. And then in Acts 8 and 39, you, you have the gift of the working of miracles, and you got Philip again. 
he was supposed to be, he was appointed to be a deacon. He turned out to be an apostle. Uh, you, you can never tell what God's going to do. Uh, what man might call you one thing and God might call you something else. And you might as well follow God. Can you say amen? And so in verse, and, and number 19, you, you have the gift of the work of miracles and Jesus did it and uh, sovereignly did it, we should say. And Acts and 9 and 6, you have the gift of the word of wisdom functioning, and also Jesus did that. And then you have in Acts 9 and 8, the gift of the working of miracles, and Jesus was present to perform that by his power and by his spirit. Then in Acts 9 and 17, you have the gifts of healing by Ananias. How how the Lord anointed him and blessed him and used him to, 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 to bring about the healing in the Apostle Paul. And, and then in Acts 9 and 34, you have the gifts of healing by Peter taking place. Then in Acts 9 and 40, you have the gifts of healing by Peter again. Uh, they were separate, separate healings that was taking place. And then in Acts 10, 1 through 8, uh, you have the gift of the word of knowledge and it was brought to them uh, through an angel. And that's something, the, the gift of the word of knowledge through an angel. And then in uh, number 26 here, you have, and in Acts 10 and 19, uh, you have the gift of the word of knowledge where, where Peter projected that which would come and how God would do it and had to do it and must do it. And so you had a function there of of knowing something that he wasn't present at the same place, but it took place uh, where the ear couldn't hear, the eye couldn't see it, but he had knowledge of it taking place. And so you have it functioning there. And then in that same chapter, Acts 10 and verse 19, you have the gift of the word of knowledge again. And uh, we had it the first time, verse 25, by an angel, and then by Peter. And in Acts 10 and 44, you have the gift of speaking with other tongues by Cornelius. Uh, he in his household, and they, they, they said that this was about 10 years after the day of Pentecost. And uh, Cornelius' household received the Holy Spirit, and Peter says they speak in tongues as we did at the beginning. So 10 years before, and here 10 years later, they, the same gift was, was being demonstrated, and it was, being, it was being demonstrated through foreigners. I think that upset them more than anything else. You know, that a, that a Roman soldier could receive the same gifts of the Spirit that pious religious people could receive. Uh, God is no respecter of persons, and He's willing to give the gifts of the Spirit to those with an open heart, and, and those with the right kind of a motivation inside. You know, uh, sometimes we want God's power to show it off, you know, of how great we are and, and, and you know, how powerful we are and so forth. But that we should not do. Uh, uh, we. The Bible, the Bible says that these function to edify the body of Christ. So whatever we do in the gifts of the Spirit should edify the total body and not exalt one person. And, and that's not easy, you know. That's not easy. We've, we, we've had in our, in our body uh, of believers in this city, uh, a man, several of them really, uh, that because they prayed for somebody they got healed, they immediately went off into the ministry. And, and they thought that was a sign they should be in the ministry, and they had a terrible hard time, a miserable time for them, and also for the family. Because one of the gifts of the Spirit functions you, through you, it don't mean you have to give up your job or, or give up whatever you're doing and run off somewhere else. Uh, it, 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 it doesn't make you an apostle just because you have a gift of the Spirit functioning through you. So the, the gifts of the Spirit are for the total body, men, women, uh, children, uh, boys or girls, are, are people higher in the church, whoever they are, but God will function the gifts of the Spirit to the whole body. And in 1 Corinthians 12 and 1, Paul says, Now, brethren, I would not have you ignorant concerning spiritual gifts. And this is one of the areas that we could be ignorant about in, in that we, uh, uh, we didn't understand that it was for the total body and that it did not make you something else when the gifts of the Spirit function. Uh, uh, until he died, Philip might have considered himself a deacon, <laughs> maybe a deacon on furlough. But uh, he went out there and did the work of an apostle, and so did Stephen, and they were appointed to be deacons. But they, they didn't leave their deaconship, I don't presume, uh, but they manifested something greater, greater than that. 
So let God do whatever he wants to do through all of us or any of us. Can you say amen? All right, we're at number 28. The, gifts, the gift of the word of knowledge came through Peter. And, uh, and, and that's in Acts chapter 11 and verse 12. And in that same chapter 12 and verse 6, the gift of faith function. And then in Acts 13, the next chapter, beginning in verse 1, you have prophecy by Barnabas and by Simeon as to what God was going to do and how God was going to do it and how this one was going to go out and that one was going to go out. He had the working through the body of Christ. Then in Acts 13 and 11, you have the gift of the working of miracles, and that was under Paul. And then in Acts chapter 14, verse 3, you have the gift of the working of miracles, and that was through the disciples. And then in Acts chapter 14, which is the same chapter, verses 8 to 10, you have gifts of healing. That was by Paul. And then in, in verses 19 and 20, you have the gift of the working of miracles. That was by Paul. And then you have in the same chapter, Acts 14, 19 and 20, the gift of the working of miracles. And that again was by Paul. And then Acts chapter 16. Now, now what, you, what you need to realize is that uh, uh, each one of these are important. Um, you may say they're kind of clustered together there in one chapter. In every chapter of the Acts of the Apostles, unless there was a preaching service going on, or, or, or whether there was a business meeting going on, one of the two, either they were preaching too long or having too much business, one or the other, in every chapter of the Acts of the Apostles, the gifts of the Spirit accepting, accepting uh, where the sermon extended itself or, or whether they had a a business conference to take place. Otherwise, every chapter of the Acts of the Apostles has a function of the gifts of the Spirit in it. I think God was trying to impress the church that this was a pattern. Now, a denomination is not a pattern. So often people say, well, we don't do that at my church. Now, not just forget your church. You know, we're not working God's pattern by your church. Uh, your church is put together by human persons and they put it together by their own feelings about certain things. But the pattern is in the book. The pattern's in the Bible. And so we're not trying to follow any denomination, whether it's Roman Catholic or Protestant or whatnot, uh, because those are fallible. Those are created by man. But what we're talking about is the most glorious organization in the history of mankind, the glorious church of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's alive and it is well. And it has been alive and well for 2,000 years. It has not died. It, it, it has not fallen uh, by the wayside. The church of the Lord is a vibrant body, a vibrant body. Uh, where, where we just came from in Portugal uh, yesterday, one week ago, they had a million people out to church. You here? Yeah. They, 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 they clogged the streets for 12 or 15 miles every direction where nobody could go to go anywhere. Now, while I was preaching there, I was only preaching to the leaders, and that was eight or 9,000. And the rest of them said, there's no room for you. They have a large piece of ground. They went outside and put up an, an enormous stage, and all day long they had church, singing, praying, preaching, every kind of thing you could imagine of. And they came from all over that nation, and they came from about 30 other nations to c coming there to worship God. I can assure you, many of the gifts of the Spirit function uh, just last Saturday, you see. <laughs> many gifts of the Spirit function. And, and so, because we saw them function even, even while we were there. God is pouring out an extra measure called the latter rain at this moment, and he wants the total body to be a part of it. He wants it to be a great thing. God wants to shake nations right now, but he can't shake nations and he gets you shook up. You know? Uh, I know I wonder about things, you know. Sometimes I have a pilot that goes along in our plane and he sells books after the service at night for us. And uh, he hears my message on Feed the Hungry. And it never takes, never gives a dime to it. And I, then I compare myself. Could I go with you? 
and listen to you tell about people dying of hunger and not give anything. It's possible that the people here who even work in this ministry here, who don't even pay your tithes to see the world evangelized. Now you see, for me to comprehend that, I don't have the capacity to because I'm not that way. If I came to a thing like this that was reaching in the world, that was blessing the world, I wouldn't go poking off in some podunk place over there and give, and, and give tithing or give money at all. Are you here? Because I burn with zeal inside of me. I burn with something inside of me that says, here's a job to get done. Don't, don't divide it. Push it, you know. And I'm a pusher. I push, I push so hard. You say, why? If you don't push, you don't ever get a job done. You cannot get a job done without pushing. And if you're not a pusher, you don't finish jobs either. You don't win victories. You say, why? Well, the devil's out there pushing against you. You have to push back. And if you don't push back, you don't win. And God wants all of us to be winners. Can you say amen? amen. He wants all of us to be winners. So we, we want you to be so much a part till you get enthused about it. it it's, it's difficult inside of me to have people close to me and around me. And in my office work, men that are very close to me, and I discover they don't even give their tithing. We had, we had one man here that boasted to me, he says, I want you to know I, I give to God. I called the computer man, I said, bring in his computer sheet. And it was away in the summertime, he'd given $5 in a year. Of course, I dismissed him. How could I have a man working real close to me that was a liar? And how could I have a man working close to me if he didn't love Jesus with all of his heart? You, you just can't put a camel and a donkey together. They don't plow well together. You just got to get something the same size in there to make it work right. And, and, and we, every one of us, if we want to save the world, we ought to act like it. And, and I know what we say. We say, you know, I don't have much. And that may be true. In fact, that may be the only way God can get you to heaven. If he don't keep you poor, you'd sure go to hell. You, you, you know, in this country when we had the greatest move of God ever, in the depression. You could say boo, 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 and have all the people you could preach to. You can say anything you want to now and you don't have them. Are you here? If you don't learn to understand God and to get back to know what God is doing and to say why God, you know, you, you may miss the whole thing and God don't want us to miss it. Can you say amen? God wants us to have it. I want the gifts of the Spirit. That's the reason we've taken all these lessons to show it to you, faithfully show it to you. And in this lesson here, uh, which has 52 instances uh, of the workings of the, of the gifts of the Spirit, in one book, we didn't go to 1 Corinthians or Colossians or Ephesians, in one book, in, 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 in the Acts of the Apostles, we have over 50 instances of the supernatural. That should prove to anybody that we want these things to be. Can you say amen? That, that should prove to everybody that we want, you know, to come in on the gifts of the Spirit like a rifle shot. We, we, not a shotgun shot, but bullets running everywhere. But with a rifle shot, we want to come in on it and say, hey, we're looking for the prey and we're going to win a battle. And all the people said, now, now may the Lord help us all, uh, not you, may the Lord help me uh, to, to always, whatever I'm doing, to do it with all my might, not half my might. And not to have a divided situation, but to where I know exactly what I'm doing, I know where I'm headed for, and I'm going to do it in Jesus' name. And if we all do that, 
uh, he'll say, well done, good and faithful servant. Can you say amen? All right. <laughs> During the week, you got 52 jobs to do. Go through the scriptures on every one of those and see how the gifts of the Spirit function there. And as you, and as you do, say, God, repeat the book of the Acts of the Apostles in my life. Because he's, a, he's great at that. Can you say amen? Give the Lord a hand, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Now, something exciting. In our next lesson, we're going to deal with the nine ministries. Now, we've been dealing with gifts. And we're going to begin with the nine ministries of the Holy Spirit. Yes, there are nine gifts. Now, there are nine ministries functioning. It's going to be very exciting. I, I hope you have your teaching syllabus ready and look up all the scriptures uh, this, this, this coming week and, and to get your whole teaching syllabus, you know, just loaded with good notes that you've made for yourself. Well, hallelujah. hallelujah. Bless you. Glory be to God. Isn't the Lord good? Amen. The Lord is so good. Blessed be his holy name.